Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Really exciting to be bringing you some resources and support for students that are about to do their exams for GCSEs, A-levels or university. And there's lots of information here. And after this webinar, I will send out lots of resources to all of you um, that are directly linked to what we're gonna talk about. So my name's Andrew, welcome if you're joining us for the first time. We work in about 145 schools across the country, and this is very much focused on students preparing for exams this summer. And what a tricky period for these young people, having had a couple of years of not having exams. Um, you know, if you're doing A-levels this year, you won't have had your GCSEs. Um, and if you're doing GCSEs this year, you'll have missed out on, while well, you've probably done quite a lot of mocks in year 11, you will have missed out on lots of year 10. So. Tonight is very much about the things you can do between now and the exams. And we're going to be talking about three aspects of preparation. Study, absolutely, well-being, and managing the brain's worry system. I'm going to talk for about half an hour, and it's all being recorded. So the aim is to introduce you to uh, some ideas, a plan that you could implement over the next four or five weeks. And you might be listening to this as a young person or a parent of a young person thinking, well, I haven't even started yet. Actually, it's too late. It is not too late if you haven't started. And if you have started, this will amp up uh, your study and support you. It is very much about acknowledging that the choices that we make can affect the, the, the brain that we're living in. Brains change on the basis of how we use them. And we're going to use brain science to help you design your study. And we're going into schools. I was in a school today talking to year 11. I'm in a school tomorrow, three schools tomorrow, um, a couple of schools on Thursday talking to year 11 and year 11 parents. And then I'm in a school on Friday talking to year 13 and year 11 about this stuff be in no doubt that you can absolutely do this you have got a human brain it is amazing it can pass exams what neuroscience teaches us is that our brain changes on the basis of what we use it for so in order to get information in long-term memory there's a way that we can do that working with our brain rather than fighting our brain and lots of the one-to-one -one coaching we do with students suggests very strongly that students find just sitting down to revise, tricky. Procrastination is a massive issue um, caused hugely by stress, actually, and we'll look at that. But look at this bit of kit, the incredible human brain, that wrinkled bit at the top, the neocortex, about as uh, thin as an, a napkin, two millimetres thickness spread over the inside of the brain. It's all folded in the way that it is because it's quite a large surface area. So for it to fit in the brain, it needs to fold up 300 trillion connections. That is where the learning is going to sit as we work our brains over the next few weeks. And it's going to sit in those connections. If you counted one of those connections every second, it would take you nine and a half million years. So you have enough space. You have enough computational cognitive bandwidth to do this. It's just about working the brain in a particular way, understanding why it stresses and frets, why it gets itself in a pickle, and how we can rock up reliably at about the same time each day and do some study. It is not too late. You can absolutely do this. So tonight, we're going to touch on these three areas. We're going to look at managing the brain's worry system. We're going to look at the study habit and study um, reps that we're going to build over these holidays. And we're going to look at planning your well-being. Now, if you've already been working with us, hopefully your young person has been doing this for a while. Study capture, flashcards, mind maps, and understanding effortful subjects. All of those areas we are going to talk about tonight in a slightly different form. But if you're a parent of a child that is in a younger year group in the secondary sector, so year nine, year seven, even year six in primary Building these habits is incredibly important each day. And if you're a year 11 or year 13 listening to this, the videos that we supply on the Neuro Ninja Learning Hub that explain this habit, incredibly powerful to help you capture more of your school day's learning. I'm not going to talk about the study habit today. I'm going to talk about study reps and the Easter holidays. 
the thing that we need to know about our brain is it works on this basis. Our brain remembers more of what we think about most. Memory is what's left over after thinking. So wherever our thoughts go in the day, that is more likely to be encoded by memory, by the memory systems. And what we know now is that the brain stores memory, not in a bank, not in one particular place in the brain. Memory is distributed across the neurons that were firing during the original event. So you're in a maths lesson, you're being taught circle theorem, you're to totally engaged in it, and you've got it, you've understood circle theorem. If you are to remember circle theorem, you've got to re enact those neurons. And how do you do that? You do it by repeating that information in some form. Ideally, a little bit later the same day, just going back over what you did in the day, looking back through notes, reminding yourself what you did in lessons, will give your brain a good chance of beginning to encode that information. The other thing we need to know as we prepare to revise over Easter is that learning is not a single event. Learning is a biological change in the brain and it involves building chemicals, proteins particularly, that strengthen synapses, the gaps between neurons, and that then, le then leads the neurons to change slightly. And we'll talk about how they change in a second. So learning is understanding the work. We can't learn anything unless we've understood it. We can't learn anything unless we've practiced it and encoded it in our brains. And then we need to recall it, retrieve it, and deliver it in an exam. So Learning occurs over a number of minutes, hours, days, and weeks after the initial exposure to the idea. So how does the brain know what is important? It works on the basis of whichever circuits are used the most, it encodes that information um, during the course of the evening. Actually, sleep is an incredibly important part of your revision preparation, and I'll mention in detail, how you make sure that you're getting the well-being habits in each day. You are the asset in your own life and you need to make sure you're engaged in behaviors as well as study. So this little gap, 2000 times smaller than a human hair, is called a synapse. And that is where learning will sit in the brain. When we learn something, our brain literally changes. Genes are turned on and off and proteins are built. And as synapses are strengthened, that then changes the speed of conduction of electrical impulses called action potentials. So on that neuron at the left, we're learning something for the first time. Maybe we're learning to play the guitar and it don't sound great. And we practice and we practice and we practice and the signal gets faster and faster. So the information goes from one mile an hour on the left hand neuron to 268 miles an hour on the right hand neuron. That is good learning, that has been learned and we've built structures in our brain that support the sending of that information around the brain. And that's what we want ready for the exams. We wanna build that network. We can't build that network in one evening ready for the next day. Cramming is deeply, deeply unproductive and actually counterproductive because it reduces sleep which means that we've got less access to the memories that we had anyway. So if we're gonna get stuff into long-term memory, it either needs to be dangerous, and GCSEs and A-levels don't fall into that category. It needs to be interesting. We're more likely to remember stuff that's interesting to us. And not all topics and subjects fall into that category, or it needs to be repeated, which is what we're gonna talk about over Easter, generating things called study reps. If you don't repeat your brain, deletes and it literally repurposes information so brains forget 56 percent of what they experience within an hour 75 percent within a day getting it into long-term memory requires repetition so we're going to help you over easter build a self-directed study slot there's loads of support videos about six of them that explain it there's a resource sheet we'll share with you as well um, and there's lots of other help that we'll give. For example, we're running a couple of live webinars during the Easter holidays to get you started. We'll also help you manage your brain's worry system and build great well-being. So the components of the self-directed study that we're going to suggest you do over the Easter holidays are these. And there is a document we can share with you, which I'll send to you after this webinar with the recording, which will include a study tracker, a well-being planner, an audit for um, effortful and engaging subjects, 
and study reps builder. So each of those documents we're going to now walk through and I'm going to explain how they work and why they're important for the brain. Um, and every single aspect of that jigsaw, every single piece is equally important. So the study tracker, um, what we've got is a resource that you can copy. It's a Google sheet and you can copy it and make it your own. It's really important as you go into the Easter holidays and you do that final four weeks of preparation that you track what you've studied. So you know what you've still got to study. And importantly, you get um, logged whether you've understood that work or whether you still need to go over it. So the study tracker does exactly what it says. It enables you to track your study. And it works a bit like this. Here's an example of one that a student's filled in recently. You've got the date down the side, and then you put in a couple of subjects because each study rep is around about 25 minutes long. And we suggest you do two subjects at a go. And study reps end up being about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how long you spend on each subject. So this student, for example, on the Monday, the 21st of March, did English and focused on the topic of Macbeth, looked at specific details in relation to Macbeth. And you can see on the right hand side, they've graded their rating of understanding of Macbeth as green. And then subject two, they did physics, they looked at heat transfer, and they looked at a Cognito video, which is a YouTube channel, where they've got loads of science videos. And you can see that was amber. And you can see they spent 28 minutes on that rep. The next rep was history and DT on the Tuesday. And you can get you get the pace, you get the sense of the detail. The beauty of this is you can look back up the list and that does two things. It reminds you of what you've covered. It helps you work out what you've got to cover next. And also it's profoundly powerful in helping motivate you because you can see quite quickly how much stuff you can cover. So for this student, over the course of that one week, they have done 10 reps of revision um, and that's even before we looked at past papers with them. So that's the study tracker. That's one um, resource inside this resource sheet we're sharing with you. The second thing is well-being. Alongside daily study, think of it like this. You're a study athlete visiting the learning gym. Your brain needs repetitions to build the connections. But alongside that, your brain and body needs to be in the best place possible because you're living in a biological machine that needs particular behaviors and habits in order to be the best version of itself. So in order to be the best version of yourself, to access all the cognitive bandwidth the human brain provides, we well, need to look after our well-being. So if you're a neuro ninja, you know about the 12 rocks of well-being. If this is your first time in one of our webinars, let me introduce you to the 12 rocks of well-being. These are the 12 daily behaviors that we need to enact across our body and brain to give them to be help them be in the best place possible. So the chemicals to be in the right places, the resources, the sugar, the blood sugar to be in the right places. We need to really look after our brain and give it what it needs. So at least half of a 24 hour period, 12 hours at least, but probably more in the Easter holidays needs to be devoted to well-being. And what we're going to suggest is you do study reps in the morning, maximum an hour and a half, couple of hours. Then you do well-being for the rest of the day as a reward. And you'll see in yellow at the bottom of that sheet, we've got uh, something called the Gladden framework. That's just a way of reminding yourself of the more positive things that you experience each day. So that is a way of logging good things, what you learned, what you achieved, what delighted you each day, a positive emotion you experienced and a new experience for that day. We ask students to think about Gladden because brains are quite negative spaces and we'll get onto that shortly when we talk about managing the brain's worry system. On the right hand side of the wellbeing planner, it says what, when and notes. What, when is what am I doing in terms of my wellbeing? I'm seeing my friend and we're gonna go shopping. I'm going to watch that movie at the cinema with my other friend. And you're going to plan your well-being alongside your study. It's so important to do that. We don't want to be waiting for the summer holidays um, in order or the weekend. We want to be planning well-being every day. There's the 12 rocks in detail. There's a checklist available on our website. 
make sure you do them every day. You are a study athlete. You are the asset in your life. Look after yourself. For example, sleep reduces anxiety. Um, if we get less than six hours sleep, the area of our brain that's associated with the worry system, the amygdala, activates 60% more with less than six hours sleep. That means we've got less memory available. We've got less cognitive bandwidth available. And sleep is fundamental to the process of memory construction. We've got 30% male memory the next day when we've got a good night's sleep. So sleep needs to be part of the revision strategy. When we're asleep, the hippocampus in the middle of the brain refires the most significant uh, memory experiences from the day. How does the brain decide what's the most significant memory experiences from the day? What we've thought about the most. So a student I was speaking to in a school um, in East Sussex a little while ago told me that she'd done three minutes of revision for her physics and spent four hours and 12 minutes on TikTok the previous evening. You can tell from that conversation which, which activity her brain is likely to encode the one she spent most doing. So silly cat videos on TikTok wins and physics revision doesn't. Don't underestimate the power of walking outside in terms of calming down, in terms of getting vitamin D, in terms of walking with a friend and calming your brain down. Walking outside is incredibly good for your well-being, and we all need to walk more, particularly when you're doing lots of challenging things like revision. Building walks, if you've got a dog, walk the dog. Look what walking does to the body and the brain within minutes. Within three minutes, your blood pressure has decreased. Within 30 minutes, you're starting to lose weight because you're burning calories. Within 40 minutes, um, you're supporting the health of your heart. Within 90 minutes, you're reducing depressive thoughts and rumination. Incredibly powerful and very simple uh, process to support well-being. Rock seven of the 12 rocks of well-being. Remember what you do with your brain each day becomes strengthened. So if you practice your study reps and give your brain a rest between the study reps, you help it get the chemicals in the right place to build the knowledge and build the connections. Um, whatever you use your brain for, it strengthens it the most. And more importantly than ever at the moment, in terms of preparation for GCSEs, if you don't make time for your well-being every day, you maybe make, make time for being stressed and anxious. And we would also advise you really strongly to plan your day every day. A brain that doesn't plan its day ends up often wasting time. It ends up um, using pre-existing structures. Basically, the brain is a network and whatever pathways our brain has trodden before, it's much more likely to tread those pathways if we haven't got a plan. That doesn't mean working every day. That just means having a plan a plan that includes your well-being. So to unlock this new version of yourself as you go into the Easter holidays, think of it like a study athlete visiting the learning gym. If you want to improve your fitness, you go to the gym and you do repetitions guided by a personal trainer. If you want to improve any skill or knowledge, you design careful repetitions to enable you to support that skill. And we're going to give you the information to build those reps. So the study rep builder is a sheet inside the resource that we're going to share with you. And each rep is full of three phases of reps. So remember, learning is getting it, understanding the work, practicing it, um, encoding it into the structure of our brain and using it. So the rep system um, represents that information as well. And reps in this instance stands for repetition. So this is how study reps work. In the first study rep, which is about 28 minutes long, the first thing you do is note on your study tracker, as we saw at the beginning, which subject, which topic. Then using a resource like a short video from YouTube or a revision guide or uh, some notes that you've made or um, a resource that you've been supplied with by your teacher, you do about nine minutes of revising that material. Ideally, summarizing it, making flashcards from it. So, for example, in that first rep on the screen there, if it's a science focus, you might use a Cognito short science video. And I'll put a link in the email that I send you to Cognito's YouTube channel. Watch that video for about four or five minutes. Make four or five flashcards. 
then after that 18 minutes of getting it and practicing it in relation to science you get up and move about it's really important to space out your practice putting in little bits of spacing gaps between your learning is very powerful for your brain it rests those neurons then the second phase of the rep begins and this is when you're looking at a different subject it might be english in this example it is so you know english on your study tracker and then you maybe summarize some notes from Macbeth, make a bunch of bullet points. You make a mind map about Macbeth and you spend around 18 to 20 minutes with your head in Macbeth, practicing it, checking your understanding of it. And then you stop, you get up and you move around. So that is effectively an hour in two 28 minute blocks, thinking about this over the course of the Easter holidays every day with one day off every five. Um, and then after you've done that, you then do the using it phase, which is basically you get a past paper question related to what you were studying in the first rep for science. And you get a past paper question related to what you were studying in the second rep, English. And you have a go at that past paper question. And then after you've had a go for about eight or nine minutes, you then check against the mark scheme, the actual answer, and you log how you did. And you do the same for the second subject for the second rep. And in the middle of that process, you plan the next day's repetition. We're suggesting that an hour and a half of study reps, two subjects, and then two past paper questions related to the subjects you studied should be enough. If you feel like you want to do more because you haven't really started until now, great. But an hour and a half of good quality revision repeated every day over the course of the 12, 14 days of the Easter holidays will give your revision an enormous boost and a great start. And in the middle of that last using it phase, plan the next day's reps. So what do I mean? I mean, get the resource you're going to use for the next topic you're going to look at. Decide which topic that's going to be and get the past papers and the mark schemes from the internet. You'll know your exam board, Google past papers and mark schemes. Get yourself ready for the next day's rep in the midst of today's rep. So when you rock up for tomorrow's rep, you're not faffing about trying to get all the resources and going down a rabbit hole on the internet and getting lost and wasting all that time. So as part of a Neuro Ninja, we talk lots about leaps in learning. These are 10 behaviors that support our learning every single day. And the study reps that we're suggesting you do over the Easter holidays are very much about those top three, chunking it, quizzing it and desirable difficulties it's really important to space learning out if you're practicing any skill like you're learning to play tennis you're learning to play a musical instrument you don't practice for eight hours at a time you practice for a burst and then you rest and then you practice for another burst that's really important the rest enables your brain to build the proteins that strengthen the connection so build in spacing um, it rests the neurons and builds those connections that we've talked about. Understand the importance of quizzing yourself. That's why the study reps always end with a quizzing past paper question, looking at um, the mark scheme once you've had a go at the question. That really helps the brain build memories. And if you present it with a bit more of a detailed answer after you've had a go, that really helps it connect that answer. And then when it's difficult, the brain responds. So initially, Whenever we're learning something for the first time, it is hard and then it becomes easy. It's hard because we're trying to build a new connection. And as you saw, the electricity, the action potential doesn't move very quickly initially as those connections are being built. Quizzing, self-assessments, past papers, refire the neurons that were used during the original experience. So the reps have been designed around that learning process. As you're preparing to build your reps, be clear with yourself about which subjects you're going to need to do more of. Those subjects are the ones you find harder and the ones that are generally, let's be honest, less interesting. If a subject is less interesting, it's harder to apply our effort to it. And it means that our brain is involved both in applying our attention and having to remember it. If it's a more interesting subject, we probably upsettingly need to revise that one less than the ones that we're finding more difficult. Um, so I've mentioned all the bits about study reps. This is a, um, a kind of an example of 
um, a Cognito video from YouTube. So this is how you would construct that first study rep for science. The video would be the getting it phase and you build flashcards as a result of that process. And then you use those flashcards, look at those flashcards and check yourself against those flashcards. Um, and then for English, we suggested that maybe you use um, a mind map and summarize notes. And don't forget at the end to get up and move about, do a few chores, empty the dishwasher. Don't just sit scrolling through your phone, get up and move about. That spacing is really important for the process of revision. And then the final section, this is really important section, of after the first 30 minutes, subject one in the first 30 minutes, subject two in the second 30 minutes, the final 30 minutes is half the time focused on a past paper question to do with the first subject, and then half the time focused on a past paper question to do with the second subject. And then in the space of an hour and a half, you're getting it, you're practicing it and you're using it, which is incredibly powerful acceleration of the learning process for your brain. And if you're looking at that list and thinking, that's all very well, Andrew, that's great, but actually I'm really struggling with my procrastination. Start like this, day one of the holiday, just do the first rep, that's subject one. Day two, do the second rep. Day three, do the recall bit where you're answering the past paper questions day four, do a whole study rep and then continue. So you're building that process in to the experience. Now, the power of this process means that because you've got a plan every day, that will naturally calm down your brain's worry system. Our brain has got a worry system. And when it looks up into the world and sees uncertain events that we haven't experienced before, for example, our GCSEs, the worry system is triggered you know it's been triggered because you'll experience strong emotional reactions like, I don't want to do that. I'm a bit worried about that. And you might find yourself experiencing things called cognitive distortions. Like you might catastrophize if you're struggling to answer a question. You might say, oh, what if I can't answer this question in the exam? I may fail my exams. I won't get into college. Those thoughts are the worry system being activated. The thing that calms the worry system down is a part of the brain at the front of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. That calms the worry system down and it calms the worry system down by having a plan. If we can send back to the amygdala in the middle of the brain that generates the worries, the plan, don't worry, I've got this plan, I'm following my study reps, I'm doing my well-being. Both of those processes calm down the worry system. So this is a one-stop shop solution. You've got daily study, You've got well-being being planned every day. Those processes together will soothe the worry system. And what's beautiful about that is a worry system that's activated, if we're stressed and anxious, we know what that's like. We find it hard to think straight. And that's because blood drains from the thinking parts of the brain when we're stressed and anxious. Because the stress system is all about survival from dangerous predators on the African savannah, the fight, flight, and freeze response. If we're running away from an animal that's trying to eat us 200,000 years ago, we don't need to think about it. That's why stress shuts down the thinking brain. That's why we need a plan every day. That's why we need to do our study reps. That's why we need to look after our well-being. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That has been recorded and I will share it with you again, along with a set of videos that effectively explain what I've just talked about. So you can access them at any time via the link in the email I send you, but also via the Neuro Ninja Learning Hub. And the last thing I wanted to mention is on Monday the 4th of um, April, so next Monday, and Monday the 11th of April, the Monday after, depending on which authority your school is in, because different um, authorities have got different Easter holidays, we're going to run a live session gearing you up to do the reps at 11 o'clock on Monday the 4th, we're going to run a session that will walk you through using a study rep, and we'll do exactly the same on Monday the 11th of April as well. So if you're a student listening to this, you can dial in at 11. We went for 11 because we figured you'd probably lay in a bit because it's Easter holidays, but you can be up by 11, and then you can go straight into your study rep, and we'll do the same the following Monday. You are not alone. There are thousands of students going through this experience and if you follow this program, you will be in a really good position to smash those GCSEs or A-levels. Thanks so much for listening. 
and um, we'll send the email with all this information in uh, over the next couple of days. See you soon.